And then this is just a graph of the results. So for pre and post treatment, as well as probiotic only, they all showed reduction of inflammation. And because of the success of this probiotic, we wanted to determine the efficacy of additional probiotics in reducing the inflammation, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, and colorectal cancer. So we used six probiotic species, um, L. brevis, L. cassii, L. brecchii, L. gasseri, L. helveticus, and L. sacchii, and two bifidobacterium species, B. bifidum and B. infantis. So the knockout mice, we use these models because they develop inflammation in a similar way that humans do. And as I stated earlier in the previous study, L. rotori showed um, the ability to reduce inflammation. And these mice, they had already been given these probiotics. They had already been euthanized, dissected, and sectioned. So the materials are already readily available for the study. And we hypothesized that these knockout mice treated with the probiotics will show a reduction in, of inflammation compared to the untreated mice, and that lactobacilli would be more effective than bifidobacteria. And something all these probiotics have in common, they're gram positive, they're rod shaped, they're found naturally in the gastrointestinal tract, and they have all been reported to modify inflammation, um, infection, help with gastrointestinal diseases, as well as digestion. So the first probiotic is L. debrechii. It's a transient probiotic, which means it doesn't stay in the system for very long, so you'd have to consume more of this probiotic. And it's been reported to help in treating lactose intolerance and reducing tumor growth. L. helveticus, it has been reported to help with colon cancer cells, bone mineral density, as well as arthritis symptoms. L. gasseri, it's been um, linked to helping with cholesterol as well as the immune system. LKCI, another transient bacteria, um, reported to help with parasites, specifically in rats, as well as allergies and upper respiratory tract infections. Um, l sacchii help with chronic sinusitis and allergic dermatitis. Brevis, um, l brevis um, helps with periodontal disease as well as mouth ulcers. Um, B. infantis, linked with um, helping allergies as well as kidney stones. And B. bifidum has been reported with helping reduce ulcers, decrease inflammation, and fight E. coli infections. So at least three mice in each of those treatment groups, they were given Epicalus E. coli to, like I mentioned earlier, exacerbate the colitis and development of it. And they were given the probiotic um, B. gavage and enema once a week for six weeks. And these probiotics, they were given to us by the um, Ameri American Type Culture Collection. And after these six weeks were over, the mice were euthanized using carbon dioxide asphyxiation. And then the colons were exercised. They were flushed with buffered saline to get rid of any fecal matter that could still be in the colon, and then divide it into proximal and distal sections. So after they were um, divided into sections, they were fixed with neutral, neutral buffer formalin and embedded in paraffin, which is just wax to help preserve the tissue. And these blocks were then sectioned with hemato um, stained after they were sectioned with hematoxylin and esuin using a modified Baylor method and stain jars, as you can see in the picture. And then after they were stained, we viewed them on, at a magnification of 4 and 10. And this is just a picture to show you what a normal colon would look like and give you the idea of the structure so you have something to compare the mice tissues to. And two ways that you can put the colon on a slide is gut bundling and Swiss rolling, which is the method that was chosen for this study, which allowed us to see the whole colon instead of just sections of it as you would with gut bundling. Again, this is another picture of a normal colon structure and what it looks like when it's not inflamed. So this is the tissue of our controlled mice, which was given no, pro no probiotics. And I don't know if you guys can see the pictures on the screen to compare it to the normal colon, but it does not have any of that structure at all. 
in elder brachii, it showed, it appeared to reduce inflammation as well as the architecture and structure of the colon close to normal. El Hebeticus, this isn't a very good picture, but this one actually turned out to be worse than the control, um, the control mouse. And for El Gastri, based on the section of the colon that we had, it did not appear to reduce inflammation. El Casei, it also appeared to reduce inflammation as well as the structure of the colon. El Brevis, it did not appear to reduce inflammation as well. El Sakei, it had, um, it reduced inflammation just a little bit, but not enough to be significant. B. bifidum also showed a little bit of reduction in inflammation. And B. infantis showed significant amount of inflammation reduction. So in conclusion, not all of these were effective in reducing inflammation, such as L. gastri, hebeticus, as well as sacchii. And even though B. bifidum did not show a lot of inflammation, it did show some. So both bifidobacteria were effective in reducing inflammation compared to the control model. Um, L. debrechii and L. cassii, they were most effective in getting the phenotype architecture close to normal. And they were also the most effective in reducing inflammation. And just based off the slides that we seen and looked at, lactobacilli did show a greater efficacy than bifidobacteria in reducing this inflammation in distal colon tissues. Those are the only ones we looked at. So our next step is to examine the proximal tissues and compare their inflammation reduction to the distal colon. Okay. I'd like to take this time to acknowledge my advisor, Dr. Alexander, as well as Camber. Camera Blasting Game, Brianna Carta, Alexis Adams, and Tuskegee University Federal Work Study, HBCU undergrad, undergraduate program, and the RCMI grant. Are there any questions? Yes. yes uh, what is GAVAGE? How, how do you uh, um, administer the, um, the probiotics? Yeah, yes, it's, it'll be an oral administration. It's, um, it's kind of like a needle with a small ball on the end, so when you stick it down their throat, it won't cut or tear anything. Mm -hmm. So you, we'd, um, it'd be mixed in water, and then you'd force it, basically force feeding them. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, what was the basis for your initial hypothesis for thinking that the lack of just based on what I was reading and what I found, um, the lactobacillus, they seem to have been more, there seem to be more reports of it helping with things related to the gastro, gastrointestinal tract compared to the bifidobacteria. So I just believe that those would be the ones to work better. So in your data conclusion, you said the two bifidobacteria that you picked actually did reduce inflammation, correct? Yes. So then in your conclusion, you said the lactobacillus worked better than the what yes. Like, how do you derive that? Okay, so based, okay, just based off the ones on the slide, the two that were most effective were lactobacilli and bifidobacteria at work, but just not as good as those two. So we, that's so where the conclusion came you, from. When you say not as good, so how did you actually um, analyze the slides? So do you have like a pathologist that's scoring them? Or how that yes, we haven't had a pathologist look over them yet, but we are going to. We want to get all our slides done, and then they will verify if we are correct or not. Right. Let us thank our presenter.